Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. Exciting announcement for all of my listeners. I've officially opened my exclusive group, the Project Me Passive Income Posse, to the public. This group is by application only, so we can keep the group high vibe and spend our time, energy, and expertise only helping those of you who truly want massive success and impact. You get live weekly trainings from me, special guest coaches, and direct access to me and my business partner for all of your questions. To learn more and apply, go to projectmewithtiffany.com, click on work with me and select Project Me Posse. And of course, any questions, feel free to DM me at Project Me with Tiffany. Welcome to the podcast and posse, Project Me with Tiffany Carter. I'm your host, Tiffany, and we're going to get down to it. I'm going to answer the question that I get all the damn time, which is why isn't my social media following growing? Why is it growing so slow? I'm doing all the things, Tiffany. I'm doing the hashtags. I'm pouring my heart and soul into my content. I'm being consistent like you always tell us to, and nothing's really happening. I don't get it. I know how painful this feels and how frustrating it feels. I also know that most all of you who are saying this and whining about it are lying to yourselves. And I'm not trying to be mean here, but you are lying to yourselves in some way. The reason your social media, whether your platform is Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is, The reason it is not growing with quality people in the way you want it is one of two things. One, your expectations are Cracker Barrel. You have expectations that you are supposed to go from 300 people to 3,000 people in two months. So you have crazy expectations like you have you have Kardashian expectations like you unless that's your cousin, or you have a celebrity shout out or someone who's really, you're really well connected to who is, you know, cross pollinating with your audience and really helping you grow. um, That's not going to happen. You see a lot of people out there that maybe you're friends with or you follow and you're like, oh my God, they're growing so fast. If someone is growing unusually fast and they are not heavily cross pollinating with other much bigger accounts or they aren't in some kind of a celebrity influencer type circle, uh, chances are they're buying that shit, people. They're buying their followers. They're buying the likes. They're buying the comments. We know my other company that I have that focuses in the digital marketing space for medical, pharmaceutical, and supplement companies, we do a lot of influencer campaigns. We have the software that actually you can run any account through and see the percentage of real followers and fake followers, real engagement and fake engagement. And let me tell you, a lot of people have fake stuff. In fact, a majority even celebrity accounts have a lot of fake stuff. Now, that's not always because they bought it. I won't get into the technicality that like bots and stuff like that, bot companies go after celebrity accounts, but some of them do. Some of some celebrities might have a following of like a million, but they want to look like they're ballers and have 4 million, so they'll buy 3 million. I'm not going to out anyone on the show. But I know a lot of people who are in the online brand space who buy followers and engagement to bump up their account because they want 
to make it look like they have more than they do when people land on their account and they don't want to have to do all of the legwork to truly grow an account organically. And it is a lot of work, you guys. I'm not going to BS you. It's a lot of work. Even though I have, you know, I have a social media manager. You could even say I have a social media team. That would be fair to say. You know, like the infographics you see, I don't create those, although I'm the visionary behind them. Um, the email list. All, I mean, I have a lot of people who help out, but it's still a lot of work for me. It's my voice. It's my words. Um, it's at my direction. And before I had that, it was all me. And it's a lot. It is a lot, all the hashtag researching, and then the hashtags change, and then certain hashtags get shadow banned. So if you use that hashtag, no one will see your stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I know I went on a rant. What a surprise. But your expectations are off, okay? And I don't know where you came up with them. Um, I would go back to the question I always tell you guys to ask yourselves when you say something. Is that absolutely true with 100% certainty for a fact for now and forever? You know, insert whatever your expectation is or whatever your belief is like, oh my God, they're growing so fast or I should be here by now. I should have this by now. Well, really, who said? Where is this expectation? I would rather instead you guys spend it instead of you guys spending your time chewing over and obsessing over why you aren't where you want to be, why don't you then go Google actual stats and facts of reasonable growth expectation for Instagram accounts, Pinterest accounts. There are tons of universities that have poured a ton of time and money doing these studies and, and big marketing companies, big marketing firms. You'll see all those stats on there. Did you guys know that your account is doing pretty damn good if you are getting between a 3 to 4% engagement rate on Instagram? 3 to 4%. That means if you have 100 people that are following you and three of them like your post, you're doing pretty damn good. So giving you a bit of a wake-up call. And that's not FMA from my ass. <laughs> that is hard facts. So spend your time Googling so you can have a more reasonable expectation. Now, with that being said, are there people who grow at a really great pace, genuinely in integrity, um, authentically, all those things? Absolutely. I'm one of them. Okay. I... I could name a few other people I know for sure that have done that. And I will tell you what the key is to people who have done that. They are putting themselves into their content. They've gotten to that zero fucks point that I talked to you guys about. You can't force yourself to get to zero fucks. It takes time. I was not at zero fucks when I started Project Me with Tiffany Carter and you know, you guys know I'm a professionally trained communicator. I'm a multimillionaire entrepreneur. I have the street cred, you know, all those things. I don't have a fear of of talking, speaking, all that stuff. Yet I still wasn't all in. I was still looking at like because, you know, doing an online personal brand was new to me. So what that I'm an entrepreneur, it'd be like me opening a restaurant now and thinking, oh, I'm such a successful entrepreneur, I can just open a restaurant. I know nothing about the restaurant business. I did know, obviously, a lot about the online space and digital marketing, but not the mental part where my name and my face is the damn brand. That was very different for me. So I was looking all out there at what other people who were further along than me, what they were doing. And I was like, well, they're doing that and they're successful. So I need to do a version of that. Um, or I better not do that. I don't see anyone doing that. So it must not be a vibe. It must not be a thing. I better not do that. Or I better kind of like tame my sassiness down and some of, you know, I can get like pretty crude sometimes with my language, with some of my jokes, my analogies. I need to watch out for that. You know, be careful about that. Maybe I won't get sponsor sponsors if I do that. And that's what I mean by 
I wasn't at zero fucks. And then I got to a point where I was like, you know what? What do I have to lose? Because this isn't really fun, kind of holding myself back a little bit. And I started getting really fiery and angry because everything I was seeing out there was all like hashtag basic. It was just boring. It was the same stuff. It was Bali, butterflies, and blonde hair. And I was over it. You know, and I'm not trying to be mean. And I love Bali and I love butterflies. And I wish I had blonder hair, but it would make my hair fall out if I went too blonde. I like all those things, but that's all I kept seeing. I wasn't, I was seeing all the glory, none of the story. I was seeing the laptop on the beach and I just like type an amazing post and I make hundreds of thousands of dollars and people pay me to, you know, drink a shake and wear an outfit. I was just seeing all that, all that stuff over and over and it made me angry. Like, oh my God, this is, this is not legit. This is people are showing some of the like high points and some of the sexiness of having an online brand, but that is definitely not, it's not that simple. And it, there's a lot more that goes into that and it's not showing the full story. And I just, I had a talk with myself and it's like, well, Tiffany, if you don't like something and it irritates you that much, instead of complaining about it, judging it, making fun of it, how about you do something about it? Because I, I hate when people complain and judge and comment and critique things and then they're not willing to do anything about it. It's annoying. And I start, I was doing that. I'm like, you know what? Then I need to go first. I need to show it. And I'm not saying, listen, there's millions of people online. There's probably someone else who's showing, right? Who at that time was showing the, the full, the full story, the full perspective and not just all the flattering fun stuff about, you know, entrepreneurship. Um, but I had, I wasn't seeing it. And so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do it. I'm, I'm going to show up as me truly as I am. And if I have no makeup on, my face is puffy. I look crazy. I haven't showered. I'm going to show that I'm going to show when I have really hard days, when I have hard weeks, I'm going to show when I have great days and I have great weeks. I want to show all of it so that you guys can get a full perspective on what it really looks like and what it really takes so that you know what to expect when you're in it. You don't feel so alone. You know it's coming. That's what would have helped me back in the day. Even that would have helped me in starting Project Me with Tiffany Carter. If I saw people who had podcasts and doing other, you know, podcasts and sponsorship deals and doing other things and talking about like, the real stuff, like the fears, like, oh my God, no one's like, not many people have downloaded my episode. Oh my God. I signed on to be a sponsor with this brand. And like only three people have brought bought one of their products. I feel horrible. Like no one was talking about that. And that would have helped me. It would have made me feel less alone. It would have made me not doubt myself as much. It would have also made me feel much closer and connected to the person who is sharing the truth. And that's the secret sauce, people. When you really share the truth, all of it, you share your version of your truth and your perspective, even the stuff that's a little humbling and embarrassing, this creates true connection and intimacy even through the screen, just like in a friendship or in a love relationship. You have to let people in in order to build intimacy and trust. It is no different when you have an online brand. Yes, you're not doing it as much in person, right? And a lot of it's through a screen, but it's the same thing that you're doing with video, with your words, with your images. You have to let people in. I'm not saying you have to overshare and let them into every single part of your life and areas you're not comfortable but you better damn sure let people in. That's how you build trust and intimacy. So I see a lot of you guys with, I know you've heard this expression before in you know the dating world, relationship world, where you have a wall up, right? And you guys know who you are who have a wall up. You also, I'm sure, have gone on dates with people or maybe you're in a relationship with someone now or you have a girlfriend or you know a guy friend who you know always has a wall up. Well, how does that normally end? It doesn't end well, and it doesn't feel good or connected to be around someone who has a wall up. I won't accept that into my life anymore. 
I'm open, I'm vulnerable, I'm real, and I'm raw, and I'm not comfortable having people in my life that don't do the same because there's not a true exchange of trust and intimacy. Now, all of my stuff is out there, and now none of theirs is. It doesn't feel good. And that's what is happening online when you guys are not truly connecting and growing an audience and an engaged audience of people who, you know, genuinely love devouring your content and connecting you, connecting with you and message you and DM you and share your stuff and listen to your podcast and watch your videos. They're not going to do it if they don't feel they know you or they don't trust you and you have to let them in and no one can make you do that. I'm a top business coach. I've coached thousands of people. I cannot make you do it. I can inspire you. I can encourage you. I can hold your feet to the fire. I can help hold you accountable, but I can't make you do that. And I'm telling you, I've said it in other episodes, toe dipping doesn't work. Putting one foot in doesn't work. It's an all in situation. I don't mean all in, oh my God, I have to share about my sick grandmother and my colicky baby and that I haven't pooed for three days. No, you don't have to go that far. You can if you want. You don't have to. It's called discretion, right? You don't have to go that far, but you better let people in. It's a personal brand. If you are attached to the brand, you better let people in. People are natural voyeurs. Your uh, social media accounts, especially visual ones, YouTube, Instagram, you know, Facebook, they are like mini reality TV shows of your life. People want to get to know you. Imagine going on a date and you didn't share any of your likes or your interests, your hobbies, your dreams with somebody, or that person didn't share any of that with you. That's a better way to look at it. And you've even asked them some questions and they're still giving you one word answers or just asking you a question back and they're not sharing much. And you leave that date where it's like, you know, their name, you might know, like if they went to college, what they did for a living, if they have brothers and sisters, where they're from and maybe their drink order and you don't know anything else. Are you really super psyched? to go on another date with that person? Well, maybe if they're really hot and charming, but likely is they aren't that charming if they weren't giving you much information. So it's just that they're hot and that's not enough. But I know we've all gone on a second date with the hot person. It's like the hot person who's like, there's no substance. (laughs) And it's like, oh my God, they're hot. Like, I hope there's like, maybe they were just nervous. Like maybe it was a bad day you know, I'll give them a second chance. But if they weren't that hot, you would have never gone out with them again. Be honest with yourselves about that. Uh, Take a screenshot. If you are liking this discussion, if you think I'm nuts, if you find this entertaining, if you're loving the show, tag me at Project Me with Tiffany. I love resharing. I love resharing all of your screenshots. They make me smile. They make me laugh. You guys can go leave a five star written iTunes review. I share those as well. I love, love, love seeing all the podcast love and engaging with all you guys. Of course, you can always DM me with questions. So I need you to commit to yourself that you're going to let some of that wall down. Okay. And I'm not expecting for you to take like a giant sledgehammer and to knock this thing down right now. I don't know. Take a few layers of the wall down. Take the wall down and put up a screen door. Like I said, I didn't come into this thing at zero fucks, but I got there. I can tell you once I did. And once I see my clients who did some of my clients never do. Okay. Some people never get there, but the people who have, and I know I have my business, I'm not joking. It was like, it might even have been a 15 times multiple. That's how big of a difference it made in terms of connecting with people. This is when people come to you and you don't have to Uh, chase people down or try to sell people on working with you or buying your thing, they're automatically coming to you because you have this energy, this aura about you. You're building the like, no trust factor and it's natural and it's real and it's comfortable. And people buy from those they like, they respect and who they want to truly like be friends with. Even if someone 
you're like, God, you know, they're a billionaire and they have they know it all. And you might be curious how they got there. Maybe you'll buy their book, but I doubt you'd spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars coaching with someone who you didn't really vibe with. At the most, you might buy their book. And would you even finish it? Probably not. Because the likelihood is if you're not vibing with someone online through video, through even their written uh, their written social media content, you're not going to vibe their book either. So what can you guys do today to let people in a little more? What is it? Can you show, um, take give people a show and tell of your office in your house of your favorite workspace? Um, can you show up on video without the damn eyelashes and the hair done? Um, can you tell people about what the hard days look like in your business, not just showing them like laptop lifestyle, like show them what the hard times look like or a recent mistake you've made and what you're going to do in the future to help avoid making that mistake again. This this is real stuff, you guys, and it's helpful. I mean, it's great and inspiring for me to show like my beautiful, you know, Los Angeles home and the backyard and the trips and me in my bathrobe all day. Like that's that's great. I believe that's important. It's to show people what you can have. It's also, um, you know, it's also proof and validation that I really have what I say that I have. I'm not the person who's like, I'm a multiple six-figure boss, babe, and they have some janky kitchen and some old-ass carpeting in their house, and you're like, girl, you know you're not, you know you aren't bringing home multiple six figures, and you have a broke-down kitchen, and you have like a white dishwasher that's turning yellow because it's so old, and you have some janky carpeting that like has cat piss stains from 1993 on it. Like, that's not vibing. And you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's like if if you're gonna if you're going to bullshit your level of income, probably not a good idea to um, be showing things like that because there is no one, even if you're someone who is a penny pincher and very careful about spending, and you're wanting to save or put all your money back in your business, with which I respect. We, we women especially know, and we know you would not have a janky kitchen like that or carpet like that. We just know. And for my male listeners, kind of my male listeners, it's like, mm, likelihood is you're not like driving around a jalopy if you're, you know, making multiple six figures. You probably don't have some broke down TV from 10 years ago. You went out and bought yourself a big screen and like the top video game system. Like, let's keep it real, people. All right. So let people in. Show them. Show them the shit. Show them the shining moments. Commit to doing that today. And we need to see your face as often as possible. I don't mean the, the you know, filtered selfies. Video. See your face. Video, 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 more video every day, seven days a week. Batch your video. That's fine. I need to see your face. That's how I connect with you is seeing your face, you talking to me. Then you can also show me other things and it can be your voice in the background while you're showing me something. I don't care, but I need to see your face and you need to let me in and you can't just talk about all the basic stuff. Teach me something, enlighten me, show me something funny about yourself. What do you collect? What are some of your weird habits? That's the stuff that's interesting to people. That's the stuff that I get the most DMs about when I say something crazy on the podcast or I share my celery juice episodes, you know, and I'm down to one bottle, by the way. But here's the thing, you guys, the one bottle of celery juice, it does not yield results, if you know what I'm saying. So I think we're going to have to go up to two. No, I'm not going to start juicing this stuff myself. That's way too much work. Three we know is too much. I poop my pants. Two is a better way to go. So I think I'm going to go back to the two. But when I talk about stuff like this, which is real, it's true, and it's funny, I get the most DMs. And I talk about my office supply obsession or I show 
how I have literally 200 Sharpies and I have like seven that are purple and they're all the same shade of purple. It just, I'm a weirdo. Or that if you don't tear off the paper towel, off the paper towel roll in completion, I cannot focus until I fix it. I won't yell at you for it, but I must fix it. Same as if you don't use a coaster on the coffee table. Can't handle it. Can't focus. Must be fixed all the time. Share stuff like that about yourself, your your quirks, the stuff that's less flattering about you, right? Don't be like, oh, I have a zit today and your skin is perfect and I can't see your zit. That's just annoying. Or my favorite recently, I've seen people do, oh, I have the holiday bloat going on and they're literally a size two and maybe there's a little poof in their stomach at most. And I'm, I'm assuming it's leading to them selling some kind of a supplement or something to help with bloat. And it's like, honey, that is not bloat. That does not translate. Bloating is when you're wearing your, I call them your fat day pants. That's when you're wearing your fat day pants and you feel like job of the hut And you want to hide and not see anyone for as long as it takes until you deflate yourself. That's what bloating looks like. Don't show me like a tiny little poof and you have like a perfect bikini model body on the rest of you. Um, No, that doesn't work for me either. All right, you guys, I want to see what you're putting out there. I'm so excited for you guys to do this. Share the show, take a screenshot, go take the free money quiz that I've created for you. Why you're not making the money that you desire and deserve. It's at projectmewithtiffany.com right at the top. Just click free quiz. We've spent a lot of time on it. Not one person so far has said it wasn't 100% accurate. So go take that projectmewithtiffany.com right at the top of the screen. Click free quiz. It works on your mobile device and it works on desktop beautifully. And let me know in the DMs what you guys get. I'm so curious. Wishing you great health, wealth, and worth as always. Talk to you guys soon. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.